Nation, what it do? It's your boy, Parrish Sharky. For Bluff City Media, I already know, the Memphis Grizzlies beat reporter for Bluff City Media here with the post-game bounce for the Grizzlies uh, versus Chicago Bulls. Um, of course, I was at this game. Yeah, uh, <laughs> the Grizzlies blow another lead, another 20-point lead. And, you know, it's interesting. This is my first uh, first time doing the post-game bounce. And what's amazing, it was crazy, what – I actually the first song I listened to on the way to the game was the song called The Bounce <laughs> by Jay-Z and Kanye. So it's all full circle moment. So, but going to the game, 20 point, 20 point lead in the first half. Um, each game, the Grizzlies, each of their four games, they have scored at least 61 points. They are averaging 65 and 65.8 points per uh first half throughout the season. Amazing, right? Tonight they ended they even ended the game 123 points. Um attempted 111 shots. That is crazy. <laughs> 111 in the game, but found the way to lose. And again, I'm going to go down the list, but third quarter struggles. This time, they scored 32 points in the third quarter, but they gave up 39. Um, so now in the season, they I think after Saturday, they were minus 39. So after tonight, that was minus seven. So they are now at minus 46 on the season in third, when third quarter scoring. That's has to change. Um, it did get a little better. They did score 32, but they gave up 39. Defense was a thing. That was the thing that Taylor Jenkins seemed real frustrated about in his post-game presser. Seemed like Jaron Jackson was frustrated just how the defense just plays in the second half. So definitely get better at that. But to start this off, I'm going to go with some positives. Then I'm going to go to negatives. Then I'm bringing my inside insights back to life. So from last year, I wrote, I was the Bluff, uh, Bluff City Media's Grizzlies beat writer and now the reporter this year. So last year, I wrote inside the insights articles post-game. This time, we'll be bringing them to video, as you've seen over the past three games. Uh, I think first, um, uh, Rusty, I want to say Rusty, Rusty Whitten was first, followed by Luke Hatmaker, followed by, uh, uh, I might get my name, guy name, man, Drew, Drew for uh, Two Bucks, Uncle Buck from Two Bucks uh, Podcast. So now it's me, and followed by me would be Evan Hayes. So, man, we're going to be in the rotation all season long. But my thing is going to be positives, take a couple of negatives. Then I had to start, stop, continue, met them on my articles last year. I'm bringing it to video. Um, some episodes, I might have all three. So episodes, I may only have one of the three. Some episodes, I might have two of the three. Um, tonight, I'll have all three. It's my first uh, first official video making for this. And just stay tuned. So first up, positives that I take for the game. Assist to turnover ratio. The Grizzlies finished the game with a total of 37 assists to only 10 turnovers. That's amazing. One of the things that during the preseason that coming from the preseason that they need to improve on was turnovers. They had a lot of turnovers. They improved. I mean, only 10 turnovers tonight. <laughs> Can't beat that. 37 assists. Amazing. So uh, who was that? Uh, Scott, Scott Pippen, back-to-back double digit assist games. He had 10 tonight. I believe he had either 11 or 12 on Saturday. Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. So, Hey, can't, can't get mad at that. Right. Also, another positive, Santi Aldama and rebounds. He only finished with 13, but he had 10 of those. Wait, I say only finished 13. That's a lot, but he had 10 in the first quarter. <laughs> and it's like, wow, like the Grizzlies, they rebounded troubles. They had rebound troubles this season so far. I think they had got rebounded every single game, their first three games. Now, game number four, they had 60 rebounds. They out rebounded Chicago 60 to 50. Another positive, seven players at double digit points. Four of those players came off the bench. So Desmond Bain led the way with 30 points. Jeremy Jackson Jr. with 19. Santi with 11. So he had a double double with 11 and 13. Sky Pippen had his back to back double double with 14 and 10. Jake LaRavia had a really solid game, 17 points. And actually, nine rebounds. He came one rebound away from a double double. Jay Huff with 10 points. I think that's three out of four games he's had double digits. Plus, he just signed a full time contract. Congrats to him. Enjoyed talking to him. That was most of the questions we had for him in the locker room. He was excited. Good to see that. As well as Jaden Wells, who had a solid game, 11 points. So, can't beat that. Like I said, 123 points. <laughs> it's tough, right? Also, uh, Bain and Jaron Jackson, their first half specifically put them two for positives. They both combined for 22 points in the first quarter. Jason Bain had 23 points at halftime. That's that's the start they needed to uh as as anybody was watching who maybe missed it. Jabba Rent did miss tonight's miss that miss tonight's game. This will come out a day later. So miss last night's game. 
with uh, the hemp with the thass ordinance that he still he had a game time this year Saturday. He missed the game last night. But hey, Jaron uh Jaron Jackson and Desmond Bain answered the bill in the first half to begin the game. And that's all you can ask for for your second and third best player. Negatives. I mentioned the rebounds was good, right? 60 to 50. They gave up three huge offensive rebounds down the stretch of the game. After Chicago retook the lead, it was some possessions where the Grizzlies had a shot to they got a stop. And they all they had to do was get the rebound. Three different times, three different occasions. They couldn't come over with the rebound. As good as they did the whole the entire game rebounding. When it came down to the crucial rebounds, then they get it. Taylor Jenkins spoke about that in his press too. You mentioned that, I think specifically the last one, where that hurt. And down the stretch, the Grizzlies lost. Desmond Bain missed the game time three pointer. They lost 126 to 123. So that was three rebounds. I mean, that, that was huge because Chicago scored on each of them. The first one was uh they scored it, they hit a three off the first one. And I believe the next two, they hit a like a driving layup or anything. They hit a two pointer. So each time it hurt them. They they paid for it each time. They just simply got the rebound. May have had a different result. Marcus Smart, 0 for 11. Not only was he 0 for 11, he still took shots down the stretch. He had an open three point. Now, they were open shots, right? So, <laughs> hypothetic is hard to say, don't take an open shot, no matter how bad you're shooting. But he did miss like a late three that I think he could side to got them, got them within one when he was 0 for 10, 0 for 11. Horrible shooting night. He's been struggling so far this season with his shot. Hopefully, it gets better. No secondary closer. I mentioned Bain and Jaron score in the beginning of the game. Bain had 23 points. He ended with 30. Him and Jaron both combined for four points in the fourth quarter. The Grizzlies, the one and done when Jai's not playing, they need another scorer, right? They need where well, they need another closer, not scorer. We got two of them out the job. You need a closer. One of them two has to step up to the plate. Jaron has in the past before, and he is kind of on a minutes restriction. He only played 24, 24 and a half minutes last night. But got to find a way. Got to find a way to close the game. Maybe it's the fast pace. Maybe they're getting tired. They got used to it. Like, yeah, I was saying six games in nine days. Got to find a way. Got to find a way to close the game. Got to find a way to close the game against the Chicago Bulls. Also, defensively, that was the big call in the car tonight. They gave up 126 points. They were up. Man, I can't remember the halftime score off the top of my head. Um, they were up 68 to 54 at halftime. 68 to 54 was the score at halftime. If I'm got if I got my math correctly, counting up this box score. <laughs> 68 to 54. Chicago finished with 126. They scored what's 39 plus 33. <laughs> 40, 73, 72 points in the second half, which is Crazy. They scored 72 points. 72 points is the key number. Guess who scored 72? That big three combined for 72 points. Zach Levine scored 30. Um, Kobe White had 20. And Nikola Vucevic had 22. Josh Giddy had 12 points and 13 assists. Three pointers. They gave up 25 and 53. 47%. And including the fourth quarter, there were a lot of open threes that Chicago made that helped them take the lead and extend the lead. And Grizzlies didn't recover. So going to my start, stop, continue, start. Start making a conscious effort to guard the three-point line. I think I said that a million times last year throughout all my articles. Still beat, and Taylor Jenkins said the same thing post game. Got to play better on defense. Got to find a way. Got to close out. Got to close out on three-point shots, man. Teams, teams going to make you pay when you leave them open. Stop. Stop with the crazy. All right. Stop with the, stop with the rotations, right? Um, Taylor Jenkins plays – Probably his bench and the bench unit actually they play really well tonight. Um, some players he give longer run to understand minutes. You're trying to work Jaron Jackson back. Marcus Martin played 25 minutes. They were in foul trouble, trying to help him back. You know, help him back in. Zach Eady only played 13 and a half minutes. He just said matchups based on uh, Chicago playing smaller. <laughs> Jake Raven played 30. He had a good game. He played 30 minutes. Jaron Jackson played 24. I know Jaron's working his way back, but got to your best players got to play more. Got to play. They just got to. <laughs> they have to. <laughs> but learn a lesson. Learn a lesson moving forward. Continue the pace. It's working. I know it seems like they're getting tired in the second half. They still ended 123. They still scored 
55 points in the second half. The pace is working. 55 points is less than 68, but you score 123. It goes back to defense. Goes back to the start. Making a conscious effort. Guarding the three-point line. That's my takeaways, my positives, my negatives, my start, stop, and continue for tonight's or last night's post-game bounce for the Grizzlies against the Chicago Bulls. Next up, have a home date with a return of a familiar face in Zaire Williams and the Brooklyn Nets. Till next time, Grizz Nation, see you.